Hi everyone and welcome back to another video. Probably when you follow me on social media and stuff, you have seen that I've been absent for a week or two, but I was working on a project for my son. He upgraded his sim racing gear and we had to build a new rig to go with it and it took some more time than I anticipated. But the result turned out great. Now these days it's very important to spend some quality time with our kids, especially now in these corona lockdown times. But that project is finished and while he's enjoying it, it's time for me to go back to air gunning. This time I got a video of the FX Impact Mark II with Power Plenum. In the previous video I have showed how to install the Slug Power Kit and got a lot of questions and requests from people to make a video how to tune the Impact with the Slug Power Kit installed. For those of you following me on social media, you have seen that I have set my goal to shoot the JSB knockouts very well out of my setup. For some reason I ended up with a big jar of those slugs and my mission is to tune the impact that I have in front of me to shoot these at close to a thousand feet per second. And thought I could better film it so I could maybe help some other people in the process. Right, the setup I have in front of me is the FX Impact Mark II with Power Plenum. We got the slug power kit installed, the Yuma Air high flow dual hole transfer port, a 600 mm barrel in 22 with superior heavy liner inside, a whole bunch of Sabre tactical items as you can see. We have the Element Optics Nexus sitting on top of it, inside a spur mount and we got a Donny FL Sumo on the end. To start a tune I had set the regulator to 125 bar, the hammer spring was maxed out and I had a valve on line number 4. So let's get the show on the road, I will get back to you from time to time and explain along the way what I've done, so let's get it started. So with the hammer spring maxed out, the regulator at 125 bar and the valve on line number 4, we were able to achieve velocities around 930 feet per second, what was not bad to start with. Let's see if increasing the hammer spring gave us more velocity. Right, so with the hammer spring increased with about four and a half turns, we could gain some feet per second to about 955 feet per second. As you saw, there was also a shot at 980 feet per second, what I think was telling me that I'm about on the edge of overpowering the regulator pressure with this amount of hammer spring. So I will start increasing the regulator pressure to about 135 bar from the previous 125 and see what it does there. So after increasing the regulator with 10 bar, we were able to get 970 to 975 feet per second. That's a step in the good direction, but we're aiming for those 1000 feet per second, as I mentioned in the beginning of the video. So let's increase the regulator with another 5 bar to 140 and see what it does. So at this point with the regulator at 140 bar we were able to get 980 feet per second with some spikes to almost 1000 feet per second. Not 100% consistent but we are getting closer. In the slug power kit there is a softer valve return spring that is causing the spread I think. So I will start by turning in the valve travel knob and see if it affects the velocity and the spread. So 
So the first couple of turns didn't have much effect, still shooting 980 feet per second with some spikes to 1000. So I did turn it even a little bit more in because I feel the valve was still closing inconsistently. Let's see what it did. So adjusting the valve travel knob inwards did yield in some very consistent shots at 981 feet per second and still one shot that spiked to 1000 feet per second. So adjusting it inwards, compressing the spring inside did bring the consistency and the spread closer together. Let's adjust the valve knob even in more and see where we start losing velocity and we continued the tune from there. Well, I could turn it in even more until we saw the drop off in velocity. Now let's see if we can also take the hammer spring down so we're not hitting that valve with too much force and wasting unnecessary air. Well, reducing the hammer spring brought us even more velocity. For a moment I couldn't figure out what was happening, being a bit inconsistent, but the impact was falling off its regulator pressure. I know, rookie mistake in tuning, but it happened to all of us at some point. After refilling we got a thousand feet per second, which is the goal that I was looking for. Still I reduced the hammer spring more until I lost velocity again, being pretty consistent at 985 feet per second. I did it, so that way I'm confident I'm not smacking that valve too hard. Then I increased the regulator with just a touch, hoping it would bring me to a thousand feet per second and consistent.
Well, that took a bit of time going back and forward between all the possible settings of the valve travel knob, the hammer spring tension and the regulator pressure. More time than expected, but finally I managed to put a good tune on it at 995 feet per second. It's not the perfect consistency that I'm normally looking for, but the 0.216 diameter maybe can cause this, since the slugs that I'm shooting are the Mark 1's knockouts and the 217 or 218 uh, will bring that even a little bit closer. It clearly shows how important it is to get the balance right between those three settings to get the right results. The settings I ended up with are somewhere between 140 to 145 bar on the regulator, the hammer spring at 18.5 mm on its max setting, the valve knob is at 6.5 mm, the just about 1.5 line. The reason why I ended up with these settings on the low side is because I think the JSB knockouts are a fairly lightweight slug at 25 grain for the current setup with a slug power kit installed that is designed for some more power and heavier weight slugs. Now these settings are telling me that the valve is open for just a brief moment to propel the knockout slug to the speed and that ne doesn't necessarily mean a bad thing. It can even be a good thing with a short burst of air having not too much turbulence behind the slug. It's a tune I never have tried before and I'm eager to see how it translates on paper. Having the valve in for that far is absolutely fine. I verified it with FX but if you don't feel comfortable you can always swap it back to the original valve return spring for these light caliber tunes since the weaker return spring was made for those heavier slugs and bigger calibers. Now, having a good tune on the bench and chronograph doesn't necessarily mean it's accurate on paper as well. So make sure you like and subscribe to my channel so you don't miss out on the next video and see how accurate this tune is. I thank you for watching and I hope to see you back in the next one. Bye.